Today is Wednesday, the 3rd of April. Welcome to our morning devotion. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Romans 5, verse 18. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. Many suppose that if God had absolved the world by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, the entire world already has the forgiveness of its sins, and as a result, the entire world must be saved. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. While this doctrine is absolutely true, the conclusion is absolutely false. Whenever something is given, two people are involved the one who gives the gift, and the one who receives it. If a rich person gives something to a poor person, what is the benefit of that gift if the poor person refuses it out of either shame or false modesty? If an entire rebellious city is pardoned, what help is there for the individual rebel if he does not accept that pardon because of pride or defiance? If the release of an imprisoned criminal is announced to him, what good does it do him if he declines to leave his cell, perhaps out of the groundless fear of being bound in harder chains? If someone we have offended extends his hand to us in hope of reconciliation, what help is that hand to us if we, holding fast to our hate and resentment, refuse to grasp it? If Christ is truly the Savior of the world, what help is he to a world that wants to know nothing about a savior, that labors under the self-righteous delusion that it can redeem and reconcile itself? <clears throat> Thus it is with the general absolution that God announced to the whole world by the resurrection of Christ. All of this is of no help to the poor world if it remains in unbelief. God has already given to each of us the forgiveness of sins, but he will not force any of us to accept it. We must accept it in order for it to be beneficial to us, and we can do that only through faith. The resurrected Christ did not offer a single word of condemnation against his disciples' sins, not against Peter's denial, and not against the flight of all the others. The only thing he chastised in them was their unbelief. The women did not believe the gospel, excuse me, the women did not believe the angel, the disciples did not believe the women, Thomas did not believe the apostles, and the Emmaus disciples did not believe the prophets. And so it is with us as well. God's absolution will remain valid and strong until the last day. However, that absolution is not given for eternity, but for this life on earth. As Christ exp expressly says, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. No one is allowed to think that God has already absolved him in Christ together with the whole world, and so these places of refuge are always open. No one can suppose that there is thus no need to hurry to faith, that there is always time to believe and to be saved later on. For the sake of our salvation, None of us can think this way. Our death is certain, but the time and the manner of that death are unknown. And if we die without faith, we have eternally fortified our absolution. The receipt God has held out to us in vain is torn to pieces, and our names, which God has blotted out of his book of debt, are again written in it because the time of grace has passed. Only those who accept the keys to the kingdom of heaven while they reside on this earth will find an open heaven and a merciful judge in the life to come. And so we pray and 
Incidentally, this hymn verse we're about to pray was written by C.F.W. Walther. And we, um, we sang it on Sunday as well. Oh, where is thy sting, death? We fear thee no more. Christ rose, and now open is fair Eden's door. For all our transgressions, his blood does atone. Redeemed and forgiven, we now are his own. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things. On this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then at this time, we'll also join together in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.